The Real Estate Show rolls on here on KMED AM and FM this weekend of June 13th. Pete Belcaster and Joe Brett, the real estate guys, with you here. And, hey, thanks for joining us as the Real Estate Show rolls on along. A lot going on, certainly in the Rogue Valley and all over this weekend, as you know. And we hope you're going to go out and make something happen. And you don't want to sit. You just don't want to sit inside this weekend. It's too pretty, no, 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 too no. pretty of, a, of a time I've right now. got the now. little pool up in my backyard. That was perfect timing. <laughs> the vegetables. Yeah. Are going great. My pumpkin plant is really taking off. So yeah, it's it's prime time. These are big things. Well, you know what? <laughs> One of the things that every well, it used to be every two years. Now it's every year. You know, the Oregon legislature gathers up in Salem, and uh, depending on your for better out- or for worse, <laughs> depending on your outlook. And it was, first of all, let's welcome Paul Shoemaker is in here. He's the Rogue Valley Association of Realtors uh, Government Affairs Coordinator. Nice to see you, Paul. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Thanks. Yeah. I, I, I was saying, you know, once every two years it used to be the legislature would meet. Now they meet every year, which is, uh, uh, as you say, good, <laughs> suppose good and bad. Well, one person who, who's with us to, to share some information is a, a, a Sean Cleave from the Oregon Association of Realtors. Sean, are you on the phone with us, first of all? I am. You're there. Hey, it works. So that's yeah. good. To, good to hear from you. Well, now you know. Do you do you get nervous? I guess. Do you get nervous every two years or every year when the legislature gets ready to meet? Because we talk a lot about you know assault on private property rights and land use issues. I mean, and go on and on and on. But what what do you think when the legislature meets around? Do you get nervous about that time? You know, I've been in the business for 15 years. I started as an intern in 99, and I get nervous every year. And I, I don't think that you can do your job if you're not on your toes. So it's it's a good thing, but uh, it's always a mixed bag, that's for sure. Well, tell us a, a little bit about what has happened this legislative session. I, I was I was up, at, and Paul was there. We were both mm-hmm. we both attended the realtor. Uh, Realtor Day at the Capitol, which is only you know one day in a very small you know time frame during the session, but uh, there certainly seems to be a lot of issues always going on with it. So, can you share with with us some of those things that you've worked on that the OAR has worked on or kept an eye on that's happening up there in Salem? Sure thing. Well, first, I want to say thanks for coming up for the Realtor Day. It's one thing for your paid government affairs staff to be at the Capitol. Uh, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, a, it's a whole new ball game when we get actual realtors, you know, real Oregonians in advocating for the issues that they know front and center in their lives. And uh, I'll tell you, after everybody left, I had a lot of compliments about how engaged the members were, uh, both from the legislators and other lobbyists. Uh, by far, it was the, the most turnout the assembly is seen for any other grassroots organization. So a big pat on everybody's back for, for coming to Salem and, and uh, participating in that. We had over 500 people, as you know, and I think uh, even with the uh, pickup in the market, uh, getting up to 500 people, that was close to a record for OAR. So thank you for, yeah. for showing up for that. Well, it, it, was uh, a, it was an impressive, Paul, wasn't it? It was an impressive mm-hmm. group. Uh, they were engaged, I will say that, and I did hear that from several lawmakers that uh, the realtors put on the biggest, probably, event that they have you know, up there during the year, lobbying and act- activation like that. So that's that's pretty good. It is, there were people yeah. from all four corners of the state, realtors showing up from from the far-flung reaches of eastern Oregon and, and the coastal area, so it was really nice to see. It's because yeah. they give us lots of things to work on each year. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so, well, and, and I'll tell you, it, it paid dividends. We did uh, start the session off with true, uh, two proactive measures. Uh, one of them was to uh, strengthen protections for uh, homeowners uh, during a selling period uh, from having hidden fees in those transactions. Um, there has been a few uh, instances in Oregon where some hidden private transfer fees have popped up, and what we did was we aligned Oregon statute with the federal rules uh, just to provide that clarity that certain fees were not permissible uh, in those circumstances. So, so that's a good thing. Uh, I don't think that would have helped uh, happened without the advocacy of the realtors coming in and asking for that specifically during Realtor Day. Mm-hmm. Another thing uh, we we set out to do was uh, to protect homeowners um, uh, by giving them more options when um, they decided to sell and carry the financing on their house. Um, we'll be uh, within the consumer protection guise of the statute that we do have in Oregon. Uh, we'll be providing some more options specifically for 
uh, people who uh, are operating under an LLC, a limited liability company, uh, to provide that seller financing. So some additional protections for both parties in those transactions. Be- because and those- what, wasn't there a thing, Cleve, not very long ago, or Sean, not very long ago about uh, – it was going to make it harder for seller financing. If a person actually wanted to seller finance your own home, it was going to be more difficult well, to do. After the economic downturn, there were some federal changes that definitely has made that more difficult. Um, we still uh, we continue to operate under that structure. Um, but uh, Oregon was kind of on the forefront of, of getting into those consumer protection uh, perspectives. Uh, we, we came in early. We actually ended up with a statute that was probably a little bit more restrictive than what the feds did. It took the feds, I think, four years to actually implement the rulemaking around the reforms that they had passed. Uh, and after the dust settled, we looked at both both the federal standard statute and the state statute and said, hey, it's, it's time to align these things. Uh, the federal sta- statute gives more options to property owners and sellers and uh there's no reason why we shouldn't conform to those rules. And, and that's what we did. And I think we made the right choice, and, and we protected the consumer at the same time. Yeah. Now, it seems oh, – go ahead, Paul. Well, I was, I was going to oh. say, go ahead. What, what's really important, too, you know, people may be asking themselves, well, why does seller financing matter to me? Mm-hmm. But if you go back to the early – late 70s and early 80s when interest rates were through the roof – the ability for owners to carry the note on a home is is really what got some people through the home purchasing process mm-hmm. and, and, and allowed realtors to continue to function. So if interest rates shoot up again in response to current economic policies, we may have to, as an See industry, more of that fall again. back on, on yeah. the owner carry. So so even though it may not seem like it impacts the, the average Joe that doesn't take mm-hmm. advantage of it now, it could be an important tool in the future if the sure. market changes. Like Absolutely. Yeah. Well, you know, John, well, I think oh. over the last five years, we've definitely seen that, that that has been a tool that has helped people get into the home ownership mm-hmm. arena, too. Well, so I think it's, Joe, it's you, not just an old issue, it's a current issue. Yeah. Joe, you did uh, seller financing on your home and when I, you bought it, didn't you? I rented my property for 10 years from my landlord right next door, who actually was the builder of the property. Yeah. And uh, it came to a point where he didn't want to be a landlord anymore. And the easiest way for the transaction to come together, you know, we had a significant trusting relationship. And yeah, he, and you could not have, at that point, you could not have bought the house on the market. You had to go through as like a, we, someone to do a seller financing for you. I explored it pretty thoroughly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was going to yeah. be a pretty tight squeeze. And uh, he was able to accommodate it knowing that uh, I had a, a record with him. Yeah, well, that's good that you yeah. did that. And mm-hmm. a lot of people do take and advantage look at the of change it. Yeah. In my, look at the change in my life yeah. and the five years now and the equity that has Went away, but it has come roaring back now, and it's, well, we been, always it's a like huge, that. huge impact for my future. Yeah. Sean, you appreciate this. We talked about, you know, the difference of home ownership and, and the value that you create for yourself versus renting is truly a remarkable difference uh, for, you know, for people to do that. I have found that the Oregon legislature or legislators in general see real estate as a really easy way to raise additional taxes or revenue. And, and I know that you were working on some of that this this year up there, Sean, in terms of the mortgage interest deduction. It, what's the status? There were like five bills, I think, you were you were sharing with the realtors. What's the status of those things? Have they been put to yeah. bed? And that is that done? That's a great question, and, and it's a perennial issue, uh, unfortunately. Uh, I think in the end, we ended up with uh, no more than seven bills that were introduced that would have modified the home mortgage interest deduction. In Oregon, Oregon being an income tax-based state, uh, we connect to the federal code for allowing you to deduct your home mortgage interest as a way, a pathway towards uh, home ownership. Um, it, it ends up being one of the larger tax loopholes. I'm saying that, of course, with air quotes around it. Uh, but when you hear politicians talking about tax loopholes, really they're, what they're talking about are the incentives mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that they themselves have created uh, for a particular purpose. And the home mortgage interest deduction is probably one of the more popular, if not the more popular, and and probably one of the more effective pathways uh, towards that incentive to home ownership. Yeah. Um, so they call, it a, they call it a loophole. They call that well, deduction, the mortgage interest deduction is a loophole. Well, not all of them do, but, okay. but for sure uh, some of them do, and, and some of them are fairly earnest when they mm-hmm. say that they would like to severely modify or eliminate the home mortgage interest deduction. Now, 
the Oregon Association of Realtors has always had a stance where we're ready to engage in, in a really robust dialogue about revenue restructuring. Uh, I think there's some creative things that we can do that actually might lower taxes for the middle class, still provide a pathway to ownership for homeowners, but also stimulate the economy by allowing some of the cities and counties skin in the economic development game. Mm -hmm. Uh, In Oregon, we're so provincial, you know, you have to check in with the the mothership uh, (laughs) sales before you can do anything. But uh, but back to your question, yeah, we did see two, uh, two fairly good discussions on two of those seven bills that I had discussed in committee. Um, we worked the bills uh, pretty hard, and we were prepared to go to war. Uh, we have in the past, and actually we utilize a, cool, a tool that we call a call to action. Uh, I'm sure the three of you have probably seen them and, and replied to them in the past. Mm-hmm. But we've got three to four weeks left in session right now, knock on wood. Uh, yeah, I don't think we're going to have to... That. We're not going to have to do it, um, but um, the fact of the matter is is the Legislative Assembly has $2 billion more this biennial than they had in the past. We're seeing an average uh, kicker check uh, next spring that's going to be around $250 per family. I just don't think there's the political will for the majority of the Assembly uh, even the majority party, which happens to be Democrat, um, to run up the hill for a tax increase on home ownership uh, when they have two billion dollars yeah. more, and we've actually hit a threshold where we're going to see a personal tax return because they've collected more revenue than mm-hmm. they need. Two billion dollars more to spend, and there's still not enough, is it? I mean, it's still it still doesn't satisfy some people in. Uh in the legislature to spend. And, I, I, don't, I, I never get that. I don't and, get and that. The one, one, the one key point that really sticks with me, Sean, and, and with our listeners is uh, it, by by maintaining that interest deduction, it, that's an investment in home ownership insofar as it's an essential cornerstone of our nation's economy. We learned that lesson really clearly just a few years ago because our nation's economy was on the brink of disaster, and home ownership is really a key there, we've got to keep people incentivized to own homes and to, to buy into that dream. L- let me ask you quickly, if I can, about land use uh, issues. Uh, were there were there anything significant regarding land use changes? I know they were trying at one time to do some experimentals with some uh, rural counties and changing some rules. Anything come through with those, Sean, or, or was it just a you know, no changes in the way we conduct our land use laws and rules. Actually, not for this session, but a couple of sessions ago, we had passed uh, a piece of legislation. That was when the House was tied 30-30, uh, split down the middle between Republicans and Democrats. Uh, uh, Representative Hanna and, at that time, uh, Representative Roblin, who has now moved on to the Senate, were the co-speakers and we had created a three-county pilot project that would give some of that planning authority back to the counties. Now, that was only uh, Jackson, Josephine, and, oh, Douglas, Douglas, I think. Douglas, right. Douglas yes, that's correct. Uh, those counties uh, are wrapping up their work on their assessment of their own properties, um, and they're going to be delivering a report to the LCDC, that's the Land Conservation and Development Commit- mm-hmm. Commission. And I think from everything we've heard, our Government Affairs Committee has had uh, at least one, if not two, presentations over the last couple of years of the work they're doing. I know that Sean Gillians, our contract lobbyist, has made some trips down south to have conversations with the county clerk, uh, county clerks and the county commissions of all three of those counties. And I think they're actually doing good work, and they're at a point where uh, they're ready to make a proposal that is, is reasonable, uh, should uh, provide some flexibility at the local level, uh, and should go forth in, in a way that actually continues to protect high-value farmland from development. So you get the best of both worlds. Of course, yeah. land use discussions in Oregon are, are always difficult. It's uh, a, a religion for some people, and, and it's very difficult yeah. to have a rational discussion <laughs> oh, yeah. when, it, when it reaches that level. But I, I think that we're going to be queued up for the 2000 
16, the short session, at least for teeing, it up, teeing up that conversation to codify what was done, and then we can take that to other counties. Yeah, wouldn't that so be I'm something? Very, very excited. Right, wouldn't that be something if actually local communities could actually do some of their own planning under the guidelines of which we have? We've got a break coming up against her, Sean, but I want you to stay with us for one more segment because we're going to talk about, I want your opinion on a real hot topic, and that's marijuana and 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 real estate. I know OAR had a class this week. I, I couldn't attend it because I was actually with clients. <laughs> But I want you, it was after the break, I want to get your opinion of what's going on up in the legislature regarding that. Because on our own show, Joe, whenever we talk about this issue, everybody just goes crazy. And everybody has an opinion, but nobody knows what in the world is going on. So we'll get some of Sean's comments on those after our break here. The Real Estate Show here on KMED for June the 13th of 2015. Pete and Joe here. Don't forget all of our shows. You can watch them at realestateshoworegon.com. We're talking with the OAR. We're coming right back after this. It's been a, it's been a strange market. Um, I know in the Valley, uh, things are, are really, really hot in the Portland area, but uh, anything over 250 uh, is is just sitting on the market still in the Salem and south of here. Mm. Uh, but uh, I, I, I do think the water crisis in California is, adding a, a different twist yeah. to yeah. Uh, the market in all of Oregon well, and uh, yeah. agricultural land uh, in particular. Well, between, you know, G- we're a GMO-free county here. We've got vineyards going in. We've got marijuana b- changing the world. And <laughs> the demand of rural properties and the, in their, their, their value is going to increase, really, I think. Uh, we're already seeing it here. We have LL- yeah. LLCs coming in buying rural properties in Josephine County. We know, so. They're all buying. Yeah. Everything's being, it doesn't stay in the market very, very long. Let me change the subject yeah. just a little bit with you, Sean. And, uh, t- every time we talk about legal marijuana and what it's going to do and real estate and how it's going to, from renters to... To buyers to uh, to everything, everybody gets all everybody gets stoked up about this thing. Everybody gets all excited. Well, tell us what the, the 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 Salem mood is, or what what the OAR. What do you think is going to happen with all this? Are there any rules, or what can people expect regarding marijuana, legal marijuana in our state and real estate? Well, I think about the only thing anybody can expect right now is that the ballot measures will stand. Um, there have been a variety of proposals uh, that have been agreed to and then have fallen apart, uh, not just 12 hours later. Um, the Assembly uh, initially started off with a joint Senate and House committee that was to implement uh, Measure 91. Um, that, uh, that joint committee split, and the Senate uh, took up uh, Senate Bill 844, and then in our Joint Ways and Means Committee, uh, there was another vehicle for uh, implementing uh, that was moved into a, a, a committee. Um, I, I don't think that this assembly has a path forward specifically towards legalization, uh, a legalization framework as far as the government goes. Uh, probably what you're seeing down in Southern Oregon with LLCs buying up land is you might even be seeing some speculative purchasing mm-hmm. oh, yeah. from investors. Absolutely. One, one of the strangest things I've ever seen um, it, in the assembly is change of who is lobbying for marijuana. Oh, sure, uh, okay. Before you saw advocates coming in, you could, they usually, you know, had tie-dyed shirts on and, and uh, definitely were consumers as well as advocates. Uh-huh. Now you're seeing... Business Invest suits, bankers, bankers, business suits, you know, people that definitely want a legal framework so they know the rules of the right. road. Uh, from a certain perspective, you might even say they're looking for some barriers to entry so that they can control the market. Um, and there's a real tug of war going on now between the ideologues that were the people who got the ballot measure on the ballot in the first place who don't really have an interest in seeing a commercial market, kind of they'd rather see people being able to own, possess, and grow themselves and share as they will, uh, versus the people who want an accelerated timeline for the commercial activities, want to be able to be licensed, want to be able to be certified through a, a statutory framework. And I think that dichotomy has really polarized the assembly. Mm. 
And, um, you know, it, there's not a real rush based on the ballot measure to create that statutory framework for the commercial side of things, because the ballot measure actually doesn't implement that for a whole other year. For a whole other year, after right. After this July 1st. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm hopeful that there's at least a framework moving forward at the end of this session, because I don't think it would be beneficial for legislators to be trying to argue this out during the short session, which is, has mm-hmm. become really more of a, a political grandstanding since it's so <laughs> close to the, the primary election and the, and the general election. Um, what we care about in the real estate world uh, is local control, the ability to zone, the uh, ability to look for time, place, and manner type nuisances, uh, protections for schools, protections for homeowners, uh, issues like odor, um, and we haven't really seen anything concrete enough for us to pick apart and say, okay, does this work for our objectives as the voice for home ownership in Oregon? So, so, uh, it sa- so it sounds like come July the first that it's every you're on your own. I mean, homeowners and renters. Uh, the, the, I mean, we've talked, you know, with Laurel from renter. I mean, you know, all sorts yeah. of issues. It sounds like. The legislature is not going to have a guide or any kind of a guide for homeowners or, as you talked about, uh, Sean, of odor or this or that or whatever it is, most right? Of that's, most of that is in our local municipalities. So, are kind of taking their own lead. So OAR is saying that the local community should decide those things, right, and not necessarily the legislature. Yeah, as long as the legislature doesn't do anything to prohibit the locals from, you know, being deciding their own destiny, then that's, that's, I think that's fine. Uh, there have been some proposals that would preempt locals from doing that. It's, it's a very strange situation where you have a state framework that says it's legal, but you still have a federal uh, law that says, no, 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 this is not oh, yeah. legal. And it actually put, it gives a lot of leverage to cities who want to outright ban it. Say, hey, you can't, you can't actually statutorily prohibit us from banning dispensaries and the like because hey this thing is still federally illegal right. uh so there's there's some some juxtapositioning going on for sure yeah. um well it's thing, not it's certainly not over for, no it, it definitely isn't over um one thing for renters um it's my understanding that you can uh provide uh, within your rental agreements, some prohibition of consumption and growing right. uh, it, within your rental agreements. So if that's things people, something people want to explore, um, I think that that uh, there is language out there uh, for those types of agreements. Yeah. Well, I don't think um, we've certainly heard the end of it yet, and, no, and it's just only the beginning. Not. We're scratching just the surface of it right now, right? Paul, you got something and, and, there? And the medical. The medical side of things has really yeah. made it really yeah. difficult, too, because, you know, you basically have two markets now, yeah, and they're competing against each other. That's going to be fascinating to see how it all comes around. Paul? Well, you know, with the, with the marijuana issue, any anytime you have a, a well-intended law, there's always unintended consequence. And being from Humboldt County, born and raised in Humboldt County, and going to school in Arcata, California, you... You sort of see a different side of it. And one of the things that an unintended consequences that we may face with the rental market are actually grow houses. Because right. in the in the town of Arcata, college children were, were college young college people were displaced from affordable rentals because landlords would actually rent out their home to be used as a grow house, knowing they could collect two, three times the rents. Mm, the house sure. could be trashed and then they could repair it when the grower moves on. So when you have a place like Jackson County where the vacancy rates are below two percent, mm-hmm. if if there's if there's a movement towards those rentals being used as grow houses, it's only going to make a tight rental market even wow. more tight. You're, you're very very true. Good point. We're going to be out of time here. So, uh, Sean Cleve, uh, uh, thanks for joining us today. We appreciate your your insights on some of the things that you work up in Salem. I know you got a tough job up there, but it's an interesting, fascinating time right now in real estate in Oregon. So you're kind of you you got the front row seat. So good luck with that. Continue the good work. Pete, Joe, Paul, thank you for having me. It's good to hear from you guys, and I look forward to seeing you soon. All great, right, thanks a lot. Thank, thank you, Sean. Isn't there? This is just whole thing is is right in the beginning stages, isn't it? I mean, it's a fascinating time when you think about it. Huh? Ask our friends in Colorado and Washington who are continuing no. to wrestle with it. Yeah, and, and we haven't got any answers. We're not no, no we're closer to answers uh, today than we were, you know, six months ago or a year ago. The Real Estate Show here on KMED, June the 13th, with the Rogue Valley Association of Realtors. We're back right after this.
It's the Real Estate Show on KMED, June 13th of 2015. Pete Belcaster and Joe Brett, the Real Estate Guys, with you. Don't forget, you know, if you need any real estate help or assistance, Joe and I are available to help you anytime. You can email us or, or call us. You go to realestateshoworegon.com. All the addresses and phone numbers are there. One of the things we like doing, isn't it, Joe? You're talking to folks. And, and we learn as much from them sometimes as they learn from us. It's oh. great to have that exchange. And it, it, I love talking. Well, love talking to people and, and finding out what they're doing and why they're here. All the questions we ask, you know, on our show, we, we ask the clients, and we were with us, and uh, we get some great answers. Cleve, uh, uh, by the way, Sean Cleve, who was the OER uh, guy who was just on with us, uh, he's really an impressive fellow, isn't he, Paul? I mean, I, I saw him up there in Salem, and, and you can tell when someone knows what they're doing in, in that legislature. And lobbying is a is, is an interesting business, but. Uh, He's really good at it, and the and the Oregon Association of Realtors is probably one of the top lobbying groups mm-hmm. out of that legislature. Mm-hmm. They really are very good at that. And you know the thing is too with, with Sean, he's very well respected. He he worked for one of the two sides, and yeah. he was so well respected by the other side that he he carries a lot of he carries a lot of of, of equity on. Them. On the hill and say, yeah, and you can cross party lines yeah. and go into the different, you know, D's and R's and all that whole kind of thing up there. Well, here in our last segment with Paul, and the Paul, of course, is from the Rogue Valley Association of Realtors, is the government affairs coordinator there. There's some changes coming up you want to talk about, so just go ahead and, and, and let's hear what you want you got to say here. Okay, real quick, I wanted to I wanted to mention and bring to light that yesterday at the Eagle Point Golf Course was the Eagle Point Golf Tournament that was hosted by the Home Builders Association and Arvar, which mm-hmm. is uh, really great program in the um, Frank Mania out of Ty Horn's mm-hmm. title. He's been doing that for uh, 20 some years. Really Long great time. guy. Pours his heart and soul into it. Goes toward a great cause. The funds raised go towards uh, Redemption Ridge, which is a really neat work in the community. If people aren't familiar with it, I would definitely encourage them to look it up and, and see what, what the builders and the realtors in the community are contributing to in that way. Redemption Ridge is um, about sex trafficking with children, I believe, and mm-hmm. Our good friend Terry Rasmussen, who's a broker for John L. Scott, uh, is, is one of the was one of the leaders of that. And he and locally Caleb and, plant, and, yeah. and yep. really has done a great job with that. So that's a that's a good uh, good contribution for realtors to do. Yep. And then one of the big changes coming down the line for for consumers, there's going to be some changes to to what goes on with escrow. August first, some changes are going to go into effect. I'll spare you the alphabet soup of government acronyms. <laughs> I'll, I'll just let you know that there's there's no problem the government cannot make worse. And by that, they've they've changed how escrow is is going to be finished with changes to closing statements. So really, the point is, if you've bought a home or sold a home in the past, your escrow experience will be different August first moving forward. So you definitely want to talk to your escrow. Different in. <laughs> When it closes, the way I understand it, when it closes, you've got uh, three days, I guess, to, you right. can still rescind. But you, you've always had that, haven't you? You can rescind well, it? Mm-hmm. Isn't well, that... I think the big thing is there's no waiting to the last minute anymore. Because okay. if you go if you go to the signing table with some changes, that resets the three-day clock. So, okay. so if, you know, if you forget, if you forget X, Y, and Z, and you need to make that change real quick, and they have to do a new. You got three closing. more, it's going right. to just extend the thing out. Okay, right. that comes in, in on August. August. Okay. Correct. All and, right. And Arvar's been been working really hard. Our education coordinator Susan Ledoux has been doing a great job getting the information out to our members in order for them to be able to run their businesses at a higher level and really serve their clients in a way that they're they're most protected. So just be aware of those changes coming down the line mm-hmm. with um, with some of the the stuff at the closing table at okay. escrow. And you know, I guess kind of as a, a segue into next week's show, the um, with taxes and everything. One of the one of the things that was under attack on the federal level recently was the 1031 exchange. And a lot of people may not know what a 1031 exchange is, but what's really important is that NAR was out there lobbying to protect it. And what it is, it's a it's a vehicle by which people can can forego paying capital gains when they sell a property as long as they invest it in a like kind property. It has to be a like kind or more for right. the property that you right. invest in. So in other words, you're you're kind of stepping up, right? I mean you're getting a better property for right. the for, during the exchange. Isn't that what that's otherwise for? you're going to hand the government about thirty three percent of your right. proceeds. Right. If you, of if your you sale. well if you uh, say if you had like a you say you had a, a home and you sold it and you had you, you owed nothing on it and you sold yeah. it for three hundred and fifty thousand dollars. <laughs> You're gonna get dinged on that right hundred thousand dollars on that thing. Yeah. So are you smarter to be to go and 
take a 1031 right. exchange and right. find maybe a better home, a bigger, you know, what right. that kind of thing, and not pay that right. those taxes. And while you know, I like to joke, I'm a legend in my own mind. Yeah. I, I am certainly not a tax guy. Yeah, no. So, so you want to talk to? I, yeah, tax. We know one. You start taxes and marijuana, <laughs> we're really going to go crazy now. I, okay, I, I, I tell you what. But what's what's really important to understand, and one of the neat things about real estate is there's a lot of there's a lot of blue jean and pickup truck millionaires out there, people that you wouldn't know that are worth a lot of money because of real estate. Mm -hmm. and, and it really is a wonderful vehicle for wealth building in the United States, and we're free to do that. And, and it's important to know that, that NAR, OAR, and the Rogue Valley Association of Realtors, we're out there to protect that, that vehicle of wealth growth at all the levels. And it's yeah. really important because even if you yourself don't own a million dollar portfolio of investment properties. There are people out there that do that and own those assets and provide opportunities for people to run their mm -hmm. business to 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 have rentals. And so so it's 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 really it's really important for people to understand. Even if you only own one home, there's people out there that own more than that and they contribute to a healthy real estate environment. And we're out there serving serving the consumers at, at all different levels, no matter how big your portfolio mm -hmm. is. We're out there looking out for them. Well, some people invest in stocks, you know, they're, they're really good at that. That's risky in, in its own way. Other, I think more people maybe invest in real estate because it is, gives you a return. It's, it's tangible versus a stock, right. you know, the kinds of things that we always talk about. And we're seeing that again, certainly in our economy right now, that's going on. Mm -hmm. Anything else uh, cooking down at Arvar because, uh, uh, it's like the end of the fiscal year, you know, comes to the end of the month, you know, and everything changes. Mm -hmm. Governments, they're out of money. New they can't wait. They can't wait till July the 1st. They can start spending money again and, <laughs> right. you know, things like that. And, and it's funny you say that because uh, for, for people at the local level that look out for the government, people that do what I do, you know, July 1st is really when things start happening. Everything up to the middle of the year is really budgetary issues. And, and now is when people at the local government levels are going to start putting things in place and enacting stuff and making those changes. And fortunately for me, it coincides with someone else coming on board to do my job. So. <laughs> because you're out of here, aren't you? I am. You're, you're going to be uh, heading where you can tell people where you are. I mean, you're, uh, you're heading out of here. We are. My wife and I are uh, pursuing um, some work in Poland in Eastern Europe. So right. we look to be moving there. Well, gosh, Paul, good luck to you. That, that's, that's like not moving to Grants Pass. I'd I say mean. most people move from Eastern Europe <laughs> to here as opposed to the other Wait. way around. But yeah, that sounds like a great You're going to have quite an experience. We it wish you be. well, that's for Thank sure. You. That'll do it for the Real Estate Show. You got, Joe, you have a good week as well. You as well, Pete. We will talk to you next Saturday here on the Real Estate Show. Don't forget you can watch our shows at YouTube or at realestateshoworegon.com. We also have a TV show that's out. You can watch it on the RT, RVTV cable channels. Have a great week, everybody. God bless. Pete and Joe here with you. We'll be back next week right here on KMED AM and FM for the Real Estate Show. Thank you for listening to the original Real Estate Show with Pete Bell Castro and Joe Brett, the Real Estate Guys. For advice, guidance, or counsel on any of our topics, or to watch a replay of today's show, visit our website at realestateshoworegon.com. This show is sponsored by REMAX, Ideal Brokers of Southern Oregon, Tycor Title, All Cities Property Management, and the Jackson Soil and Water Conservation District. We'll continue our weekly quest to enhance the value of your property and to make you a smart real estate consumer when we gather every Saturday and Sunday on KMED for the one and only original real estate show.